Australia's unique natural and cultural heritage is a precious link to the past that many of us seek to protect for the future. From the beginning of the 20th century, people were looking at their environment with new eyes and with a realisation of the need to conserve it. The impetus built up and the vision and commitment of individuals, community groups and government led to the formation of the New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service. That was 40 years ago, 1967, a year that marked a new direction for conservation in New South Wales. Here is a glimpse of the history of the NPWS, some of its challenges, some of its achievements. The story begins quietly in the late 19th century with a series of small reserves created by the Lands Department in places far from the city, such as Dorigo and Bungonia. Sydney was heavily polluted with the smoke of burning wood and coal. The National Park, later renamed the Royal National Park, was declared in 1879 and described at the time as both the lungs of Sydney and as a pleasure ground for Sydney sighters to escape to. To make it truly a place of recreation, the trustees provided amenities such as boating, a zoo and train rides. At the time, it was only the second national park declared in the world. Fifteen years after Royal, Karingai Chase National Park was reserved, but for its natural values as well as recreation. Sydney now had two large areas of protected bushland, both to the north and south of the city. Over the next few decades, various community groups and coalitions were formed to lobby government, resulting in new legislation and more reserves. The idea of protecting the bush for its natural values gained momentum, particularly among bushwalkers who were inspired by the spectacular places they visited. The saving of the blue gum forest from clear felling in 1932 by a coalition of bushwalkers is an important example of this changing ethic. Three years on, after a long local campaign, Booty State Park to the north of the city was reserved. To the south, Morton National Park was declared in 1938. It wasn't just the people near the city who were working to have land protected. There was a sustained campaign by locals to reserve the dramatic, scenic bushland that became New England National Park in 1935. At the opening ceremony, bad weather meant that only the governor got to the top of the mountain, his car pulled by a horse. In the 1940s, Two developments had a major influence on the evolution of the reserve system. The first was the establishment of an extensive Kosciuszko State Park in 1944. The second development was the formation of the Fauna Protection Panel important because it was given the ability not just to protect fauna, but to manage it by establishing faunal reserves. John Gould Reserve was the first to be declared. And island off Port Stephens, it is still an important nesting ground for seabirds. By 1955, it was becoming clear that the state's natural resources were being threatened by competing land use environmental groups banded together as the Nature Conservation Council in order to lobby more effectively. By the end of the 1950s, new state parks were established. Dorigo, mainly for its rich rainforest communities, wildlife and recreation, and the Warren Bungles as an example of a remnant volcanic crater. Gloucester Tops was also reserved at the same time, 
later to become part of Barrington Tops National Park. Closer to Sydney, two new areas were declared, Brisbane Water National Park and Blue Mountains National Park. When the National Parks Association was formed in 1957, it campaigned vigorously to have a National Park Service. It also became a key player in many of the conservation battles that followed. After a decade of lobbying, the New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service finally came into existence on the 1st of October 1967. In the same year, Kinchiga National Park was established. Three new historic sites were also reserved. Mertwingi, valuable for both Aboriginal culture and early European pastoral history. Bear Island, for its military history. Hill End, for its gold mining heritage. Near the coast, two other areas were reserved at the same time. Darug National Park and Mount Warning State Park. Around 50 rangers attended the first ranger training school at Royal National Park in 1967. The first rangers were all men, and it wasn't until a few years later that the first women were employed as rangers. A priority of the new service was to increase the area of conserved land, and the National Parks and Wildlife Foundation was formed in 1970 to raise money for new reserves such as Sturt National Park. The first major challenge for the service was the coastal sand mining which flourished during the 1960s on the north coast with almost no areas protected. Mile Lakes became the focus of conservation groups which by this time had become a political force capable of mobilising large scale community involvement. They vigorously opposed the industry for many years, relying heavily on scientific studies to show that irreparable damage was being done. Mile Lakes National Park was finally declared in 1972. A further nine coastal reserves were established with sand mining excluded from all national parks as leases ran out. In recent years, marine extensions have been added to six parks, including Lord Howe Island, and solitary islands. As the sand mining campaign was winding down on the coast, in the hills and valleys of the Great Eastern Escarpment in the north, another long simmering battle came to the boil over the logging of some of the world's outstanding rainforests. Conservation groups began campaigning to protect rainforests by having them reserved as national parks, while locals began protests to stop the logging. Events to reach a climax at Terrania Creek in 1979 with confrontation between police and protesters, followed by a government moratorium to stop logging while an inquiry took place. The service provided scientific data to support the proposal for new national parks. The historic decision to protect the rainforests was made in 1983 when 115,000 hectares were conserved within parks, including Nightcap National Park and Washpool National Park. All these parks are now part of the Gondwana Rainforests World Heritage Area. In the meantime, logging of the old growth eucalypt forests on the southeast coast for wood chips was building up friction in the community. By 1989, demonstrations had become intense with many protesters arrested. Surveys by NPWS scientists showed that the existing reserves were inadequate and this formed a firm basis for eventually resolving the woodchip issue in 1997 when the South East Forest National Park was declared. World first reserve selection techniques developed by the service also underpinned the later regional forest agreement process which ran from 1996 and resulted in more than 860,000 hectares of forested land being reserved. Following the forest successes from the mid-1990s, the next area of focus was to the west. Since western bioregions were not well represented, a number of parks were declared. There was Gundabooka, a dominant range near Burke. Others included Ulambeen on the Riverine Plains, Paru Darling National Park in the Paru River wetlands, Yanga on the Murrumbidgee River, and additions to Mungo National Park, centre of the Willandra Lakes system. 
as well as these pastoral holdings, in 2005, vast areas of western woodland were reserved as the Brigalow and Nandywar Community Conservation Area. To conserve the range of biodiversity in the whole of New South Wales, the service is working towards a reserve system that is comprehensive, adequate and representative. A major challenge has been to provide for ecological continuity by forming a chain of reserves. The Great Escarpment Parks established between 1979 and 1991 included Yengo, Wollamai, Oxley Wild Rivers, Natai. When combined with older reserves such as Canengra Boyd, these parks create an almost continuous link of protected areas from the Victorian to the Queensland border. In parallel with natural heritage conservation, the service has protected Aboriginal heritage since 1969, when it became responsible for Aboriginal relics and sites. An early milestone was the Sites of Significance survey during the 1970s, in which staff consulted with Aboriginal elders and communities about areas that were important to them. The survey team included the first Aboriginal employees in the service, and there is now a large network of Aboriginal staff. As a result of the survey, the first Aboriginal place, King Merriman Island in Wallaga Lake, was declared in 1976. Five years later, the historic decision was made to stop logging in Mumbala State Forest because of its cultural significance to Aboriginal people. Co-management of parks with Aboriginal people is one of the most recent developments. The first handback of a park or reserve to traditional owners took place in 1998 when Mootwinji Historic Site became Mootawinji National Park. In 2001, Arakwal National Park was created in an historic agreement with the Byron Bay Arakwal people. Mount Grenfell Historic Site near Kovar was returned to the Niampa Wongabon people in 2004. Now part of the Department of Environment and Climate Change, the service has grown from a staff of 65 to almost 3,000. It has a wide range of responsibilities, many undertaken in partnership with the community. Fire management and control of pest species are continuing tasks. Other areas of priority are historic heritage conservation, threatened species management and visitor services. The reserve system has grown from less than a million hectares in 1967 to over 6.5 million hectares in 2007. It includes 758 reserves and covers about 8% of the state. Over the last 40 years, the service has passed many milestones. Challenges such as climate change will persist and will be met with high standards of research and management in partnership with the community to conserve our unique natural and cultural heritage.